begin this 2020 Chicago Auto Show recap, I am in no way affiliated or endorsing any of the car companies shown in this video. I am merely a consumer coming to the show to browse the vehicles and take in the general atmosphere. Don't get me wrong, I love cars, I love making videos on cars, I love talking about cars, but I am not a writer for Jalopnik, I do not work for Motor Trend, I am just an average consumer coming in and talking about vehicles. Essentially what I'm saying is take everything I say with a grain of salt. So I hope you enjoy this quick recap on some of the highlights of the 2020 Chicago Auto Show. For the uninitiated, the Chicago Auto Show takes place every year in Chicago, Illinois at the McCormick Plaza right on the shores of Lake Michigan. I'm also shooting in 4K at 60 FPS, so this is a bit of a new format that I'm testing out for this video and we'll see how storage issues and such arise. Anyway, on to the show. As you will see, there are hundreds of vehicles and thousands of people milling around on the show floor and 90% of these vehicles you can walk up to, touch, and even get into and open the trunk and such, so it's a very tactile experience. My father was along for the ride and he loves Chevys, so we beeline to the Chevy show floor straight away. So a crowd favorite of the auto show is the various test tracks that are featured on the showroom floor. This year we had four separate test tracks and for the first time ever, Volkswagen had their own test track. As you can see, the majority of the Volkswagen test track was just a bunch of crossovers going over a little bit of dirt and smooth pavement. Not terribly exciting. If we're going to be honest, the only one that's really worth going to is the Jeep test track, which is always a favorite of the test tracks. And you'll see why in a little bit. Quick shout out, if you're ever at the show, go to the 23rd Street Cafe. They have delicious food. And if there aren't any tables, you can always pop a squat nearby. So one of the things I was really excited to see at the show was the new Mustang Mach-E, which is an all-electric Mustang that's going to debut in the spring of 2021, I believe. Direct from Ford's website, the Mach-E boasts a 300 mile range and is 0-60 to 60 time in the mid-3 seconds. I've gotta say, going with a four-door design was pretty bold, but I think they pulled it off and I really do like the front grille of it too. To be honest, it's a little weird not seeing a front grille for the radiator since an all-electric vehicle has no need for such. Here's something really neat, the new Ford Police Interceptors have the flashing LED lights integrated right into the headlight assembly, which I thought was really cool. As I mentioned previously, you can walk up and get into many of the vehicles, so here I am walking into a Ford cargo van and just checking it out. So the second best test track, in my opinion, would be the Dodge Ram test track, and this showcases many of their trucks doing various activities like lifting up large weights and going over bumps and other sort of truck activities. So as we watch this gray truck here start to go over the track, you'll notice on the back tailgate that there's actually a seam in the middle, and that is a split in the tailgate so it can fold open like French doors, which I thought was very cool, and almost certainly patent pending. Next up we get to the Jeep and FCA showroom floor. And you'll notice right in front of you is a 2020 Jeep Wrangler Willys Edition with the V6 option, making 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, so no more inline four soggy pancake performance from older YJs and TJs that Mr. Jeep Sheep himself can attest to. Also at the Auto Show was the new Jeep Wrangler with the 3.0 liter eco diesel engine that purportedly gets 29 miles per gallon on the highway, which is very exciting to see. Moving along, we have the test track with the Jeep Gladiators and other models going over the test track. First, you'll see this Jeep Cherokee go over the breakover section of the track, and you'll see it kind of struggle a bit, honestly. But then, watch the four-door Rubicon go over the same section of the course, and you'll see the articulation and the flex of the wheels. And it's really cool to see that.
So this next part has very little to do with the auto show in general, but this was at the Chrysler section of the show floor, and these two tatted up chicks handcuffed themselves to this minivan, and they started shouting things like, Chrysler has blood on their hands. And apparently, when you listen to their little spiel, they said that Chrysler funded the I did a rog dog sled race, which happens in Alaska, and apparently dogs die a lot on the trails because of malnutrition and abuse and such. So they were eventually taken away, as you can see, and all was back to normal. About 10 minutes after this, a guy showed up with bolt cutters, which I thought was really funny. So the reason I was over at the Chrysler section was I wanted to see the new 300S for the 2020 model year. It comes with a standard V6, but you can go for an optional 5.7 liter V8 engine in this, honestly, not that huge of a sedan. So it's, it's got a lot of power. And I was surprised to see that it only started at 36695 which honestly is a pretty reasonable price for a luxury sedan of this size and caliber. Now some people might say it's a bit cheesy, well, I would have to disagree. I mean, the interior itself looks amazing. I love the stitching they've done on the interior plates, and the dash looks great, and the only real complaint I have about the entire vehicle itself is the gear selector, which is a little knob on the center console, which I think is just the cheesiest thing in the world. But that's about all the only ill words I could say about it. I mean, the price, the engine options, the interior, everything is very nice. Here we have a nice selection of mid-60s classic Mustangs in immaculate condition, and we also have some slightly newer models from local Chicagoans in the area. So now we come to the supercar section on the showroom floor. Now all these cars are pretty nice to look at, but honestly I consider this section of cars like the Apple products of the car world. They're very sleek and nice to look at, but at the end of the day you're paying a lot for not a lot of product. And honestly, if you take any of these cars and you take the zero to 60 time and the luxury that you get, any car manufacturer could build these cars for a half or even a third of the price and probably get more performance and more power out of them. I think you're just kind of paying for the name, hence why I call them the Apple products of the car world. So here I am at Buick, and honestly, not very impressed with the lineup for 2020. Absolutely no sedans whatsoever, they're all crossovers. Here we are at Cadillac looking at the CT4-V sedan, which in my opinion looks pretty damn good. I mean, the front grille with the swooping LED turn signals and the headlights and just the body lines just looks very good. Cadillac almost never disappoints. And here is the 2020 Lincoln Continental, which I think is a very attractive car as well. It's just a big full body sedan, big engine in it, the grille looks awesome, the headlights look amazing. And I would honestly wouldn't mind having one of these cars for myself. So here's the new 2020 Lexus LC Convertible, which is also another very attractive car. And I don't have much to say about this as I'm not much of a Lexus person, so let's just watch and enjoy. This is the 6.2 liter Hemi V8. And this is one of the engines that powers the Dodge Challengers, like the Demon and the Hellcat. This is a very impressive engine, and one of the things I love about it is it has two spark plugs per cylinder for a total of 16 spark plugs per engine, which is just boggles my mind. And as you can see, this one slowly rotates, so you can see the pistons moving up and down, you can see the impeller of the supercharger moving, and all in all, just a very neat display. Here's a short clip to give you kind of the scale of the show. This is only about one-sixth of the entire show floor that I am panning around to, so that kind of gives you an idea of the size of this thing. And as with many ends of the auto show day, we took a trip to the Hard Rock Cafe in downtown Chicago where we had a nice meal and enjoyed the sights and sounds. I want to thank you guys for watching this video and tune in for more content. This is Brett to Loaf signing off.